Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, the art of the slide. Stay tuned. All right, so we're talking about sliding today, and I used to always see sliding at the French Open when it's clay. But in the past 10 years or so, uh, everybody seems to be sliding on every kind of surface possible, including concrete. So who else would I ask to do this but Rudy Galindo himself, also known as Coach Chris. All right, Coach Chris is the master of sliding because he burns through shoes like there's no tomorrow. All right, so Coach Chris, yep. why do we slide? So in general, to slide, uh, we do that in more of a defensive position in the court. So when someone hits a pretty fast ball past you or try to hit past you, um, the reason why we slide is because we carry ourselves towards that towards getting that ball but then also making sure that we because it's harder a little bit harder to stop full on um, because if we do then it would actually be a little bit harder um, on our body and we actually typically sprain something along the process but it's to actually stop ourselves from form. So basically coach Chris mm -hmm. we, we slide into the ball to get our momentum into the ball mm -hmm. right and basically to prevent injury is that correct yeah so when you're running really fast right um, it's really hard to come to a, go to a complete stop so with sliding we're actually allowed to carry ourselves through the shot a bit more and actually we're also um, turning a shot that's kind of like for example if you were to say to get a drop shot you're turning that drop shot your ball into something a little bit more offensive too because you're bringing your body weight into the shot too basically what you're telling me is instead of running through that ball and hitting it in which you'll have to take two three maybe four steps to actually come to complete forceful stop and then turning direction to the other way that this is a con more controlled way of stopping yourself getting a shot back and then getting back into the point uh, not necessarily. I think that if you're, let's say, you're on full on sprint. So these sliding is basically when you're, you are limited on time and someone's hitting something with a lot more pace and your really only option is to really get, get underneath, get to the ball, but full on sprint. That's when you would want to use a slide. But obviously if you'll have times when you're able to kind of slide into your shots regardless, um, even on clay, on especially on a clay surface, but on a hard surface particularly, um, I would definitely go over. I would I would definitely prefer to hit something where I um, can take a few steps. But if I'm sliding to a ball, that's typically when I'm under under pressure, uh, time pressure to get to it. So defense, you you when you slide, you're de defensive. Obviously, you're just trying to get the ball back at that point, possibly sending it up in the air. So you can get back into the point. Yes, uh, typically, right? You're looking to. It depends on what um, a really good player. If you send it back in over into the air, like a little bit higher floaty back over the net, a really good player would come in and look to volley that um, down and then put pressure on you again. So I'm really looking to not necessarily float it up, but also hit something that can just push them back into the court. So it's not only. I'm essentially trying to neutralize the ball too as well um, um, when I'm sliding. Right. Okay. So, but if I see that you're defensive, you slid into the ball, hmm? my reaction is to come in anyway. Absolutely. So, yep. Mm -hmm. So, I would say, wouldn't you just send up a lob kind of as deep as you can? Yeah. You could right? definitely do that too as well. It's the goal is to buy yourself time to come back inside um, the court, but because because the pace, the and typically uh, the the speed and the um, the pace of the the rally that you're hitting is quite fast. So being able to chip something back in deep, they're not also having enough time to come in too as well, because you're actually you're actually slicing it um, fast enough for them to keep them pushed back instead of slicing it and then lofting it up a little bit more up, up in the air. 
if that makes sense. Okay, cool. So let's let's teach the guys, let's teach everybody out there how to slide properly, okay? So let's get back to the baseline and uh, show you. All right, so we, before we get started here, put a disclaimer out there that you should do this and learn on clay. Um, I know everybody and all you high level guys out there uh, sliding your feet off um, on this hard court surface. Um, make sure you know what you're doing, okay? I teach you how to do it a safe way right now, but we don't want you guys hurting yourselves, twisting an ankle or jacking up a knee, okay? So practice on clay um, if you can, but we're gonna try to teach you the safe way right now. All right, so Coach Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you. We're gonna go towards that forehand side first, okay? Okay, so, and I would add to that too, I think there's another good exercise first to start off before uh, you start sliding around on the tennis court. I think um, everyone's done this before uh, when they're growing up, but uh, if you've ever had, you wear, you wear socks when you're indoors and you can slide around inside like a hard surface, that's something that would also, uh, you could try it out too as well. And that's probably the step one into learning how to use your body a bit more into sliding. So. Uh, yeah, if you got socks and you've got a hardwood floor, try sliding around on that a little bit. You can clean that kitchen while you're at it with those socks then, all right? <laughs> yes, mom, dad would be pretty happy about that. Okay, so we'll start off here on the court. So as we're, as we're doing this, obviously I'm assuming that everyone's pretty warm um, in terms of their body. Um, you don't want to do it when you're cold, because if you are, then you might get, you know, you might get injured. But what I tend to think of when I'm um, hitting a shot is that I want to over kind of overrun it almost right so if, if a shot is coming in or if a ball is coming in close to me um, or there maybe I want to make sure I overrun it so what I am doing is that I'm actually creating uh, a lot more momentum and then what I'm doing is I'm also lowering myself so that way when I'm running as fast as I can I can slide and stop and bring my right foot out and then my weight transfer is going back into this direction, into my left. So that way I can push off and recover back to the next shot. So if I do it, uh, I'll try to do it a, um, a little slower. So if I were to run, right, I'd basically slide and stop myself, but I'm, my weight transfer is going more into my left from where I was running from. Right? And it only works if you're staying in this nice athletic stance. It's not going to work if you're going to be upright and sliding so again it's just really simply making sure you overrun it so running 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 and then sliding stop making sure your weight is going into that direction then recovering back in the middle try one in real speed real speed real speed okay so say if i'm running right back in and then same thing so I'm staying nice and low through my shots. There you go. Twinkle toes. Learn it that way. Let's show them on the backhand side. What are we doing on the backhand side? So the backhand too, a little bit difficult, I think, because depending on how comfortable you feel with your non-dominant side, um, you still want to keep the same idea of making sure that your weight is going towards at the end going towards this way to your right, uh, to my right, right? So as soon as I run and overrun it almost, I, the feeling of overrunning a shot and then full on stopping and then sliding, making sure that you carry your momentum that way. Your momentum will go that way, but your weight transfer will be going that way. So in essence, say if I were to hit a backhand, right? Stop, recover back. So it's all about hitting and then recovering back. Yeah. Let's try full speed on this one. Full speed. Okay, so full speed, be here. Back in, right here, and then back in. Make sure you stay nice and low. Make sure your knees are bent. Um, I've never heard of this except on clay. I'm of that age where you don't slide on a hard court, right, uh, or else you're gonna be breaking something, okay? Uh, but this new generation uh, loves to slide and jack up their shoes. So 
Um, let me just show you something real quick. Well, let's look at his shoes here. Right? I was like, why the hell are we going sideways? The sole is down there, right? So why are we putting holes here? Why are we doing sideways? There's how, a hole in my sock, too. I know. What is that? Look at that. See, so how are we doing this? Why do we Why do we go sideways, Coach Chris? So it's a side product of, of stopping yourself a lot when you're here. But I, I think this the way I got this a little bit more was more from sliding forward. And you'll see me do a little bit more going into the court because when I slide, my toe, right? catches the ground when I'm with me. And it also has to do with how I'm flexible too and how I'm able to get those low ones. But you see how low um, my shoe can go and that's where I get the, the hole when I slide. So it's like kind of here. So is that a reach thing? Is that a reach thing that, that you're like edging for more of that, mm -hmm. uh, that extra so, inch? Yeah, so earlier we did sliding side to side. There's also sliding you know, forward and backwards too as well. It's relatively the same thing. Um, but again, you right, you want to make sure that you're staying low to it, right? Your momentum this time is going forward into the shot. Same thing if you were to slide backwards, your momentum going back into the shot. Never going forward, but always staying low through it, right? Through it. Yeah, so this time it's going forwards and backwards. So you're actually sliding with your momentum a little bit more versus here you're actually sliding and then you're trying to recover back to go back into the court to, to actually get you to slide. Let, let's show the fans the forward slide then so that's what caused that hole, all right? Because that'll okay. be kind of cool to look at, all right? So coming in, your foot went sideways like that to put the hole there. Right. Um, do you really gain an advantage by sliding into it like that? Absolutely. So. Especially, like I said, a lot of these sliding shots that you're going to be hitting is when you're full on sprinting, like for a drop shot or something that's almost uh, out of reach. And for that one, once you kind of, once you're there, you're able to inject a lot more energy into the ball. And versus, it's much harder to run up, take a few steps, and hit something because you're already all full on stretch. So and it's, it's a little harder, it actually slows you down. But that's one of the reasons why people slide into their shots is because they can turn something where they're on the defensive right away into an offensive shot. So it's a momentum thing, right? Because all your force is essentially coming into that racket, into that ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And really good players are able to place it really well in the court after getting that low slice ball. Um, or they really soften up their hands and making sure that they hit something that's short in the court too. It's all you can. It all depends on how how well you time it too, um, and exactly your intention. Your intention is um, trying to hit it deep or trying to hit short, and then depending on where your opponent is standing in the court. Okay, so the last shot is going backwards. I've never seen somebody slide going that way. Uh huh. How's that work? I guess I'm about to show it. So sliding backwards. Uh, very much the same thing. I do a lot of this too. When someone lobs you, uh, you'll see a lot of players do this too. Um, but typically, it's again, all these shots are full on sprinting. So for, for one that you're going backwards, you do still want to make sure that you're running full on. And then you're committing to sliding back, right? And then catching the ball back here too as well. So you are still in the essence sprinting, but you're not as low. Sometimes you can be, depending on how low that ball is, but for the most part, typically the better shot would be to run back and see if you can hit uh, a forehand or a backhand, because that's a little bit more, um, uh, that's, a, that's a more high percent shot than slicing it um, and sliding back there, so. So this would be an essentially a desperation shot. Yeah, more yeah. or less, it's, uh, you're under pressure time pressure um, to get back there and do your best just get get it back over so but that's all these all sliding is also in general the when it's done right is when you're under time pressure right so okay so to go over things here from all the shots I've seen you do aside from going right at the net there mm -hmm. the side to side ones it looked like you struck the ball and then you slid mm -hmm. so from what I could see it's unlike 
clay where you're sliding into the shot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then changing direction. It looked like you struck it and then you're sliding to, to kind of stop quickly and then redirect. Yes. So it's different than sliding on clay. It's... Well, you can still slide after you're hitting a shot on clay. It's a defensive uh, move for sure. But on clay, you do slide and hit a lot more um, in general because the surface is it, itself a little, a lot more. Um, it's it's a lot more of a slicker surface. So you're gonna have to adjust a little bit more accordingly with your shots by first sliding and then pushing up and hitting. Um, but on this, for our particular sliding, it's a little bit more, especially on a hard surface, it's more of a defensive maneuver than an offensive um, shot, if, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're basically sh striking the ball. You know, Djokovic does it the best. It, it, you guys probably seen a lot. He strikes the ball, kind of like puts the brakes on the slide mm -hmm. and then redirects the direction and goes back the other way. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what Coach Chris is teaching you today to do it safely. So, what we, what I want to emphasize is you struck the ball, you basically put the foot down to kind of slow down and stop. Therefore, you're sliding to stop mm -hmm. instead of taking, you know, two, three, four steps, like I said, and then putting on the brakes and then changing direction. So, it's a quicker way to recover, right? Sliding takes a lot of time. Um, versus hitting a good rally ball in the in the court. So it's again, it's just all about trying to make sure that you oh, the ball deep. Right. Sliding can be really helpful if you want to use it um, in and a tool to use to uh, be uh, defensive in your shots and to, to buy time for yourself to come back into a shot. But I wouldn't recommend doing all the time. Right. So this in my generation didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Why do you think in your generation um, it's a little more of a common place. So I think uh, the game's gotten a lot faster. Um, so people, uh, the, the, in general, a lot of young players are, are really physical with their play style. So you'll see a lot of running around on the court, ground strokes particularly. So um, when that happens, and since the game is kind of elevated to that, you'll see a lot of people sliding a lot more, trying to maintain their... Um, their stake in the point a bit longer without getting blown off the court. So perfect. Yeah. All right. So we're going to show you some right now in a semi full speed and show you how to do it the right way in semi full speed. Stay tuned. So Michelle Kwan just gave you a little show here, and uh, wasn't that pretty? Was that all 10s? Yeah, 10, baby, 10. Yeah. Okay, so do it properly. Slide properly, okay? Listen to what Coach Chris just said, okay? Strike the ball cleanly, and you won't have to slide so much, and you won't be burning holes through your shoe like Coach Chris too, Okay? Any final thoughts, Coach Chris? Yeah, I'd say if you want to give it a go, I'd say practice definitely. Um, I'd say indoors. I think the most common way to do it would be, again, to wear socks and try to slide on some hardwood floors. Um, and, it, again, making sure you keep your center of gravity low. It's not going to work if you're upright. Um, but do it at your own risk. Obviously, you know, I'm a professional here. He's not, but that's why that's he's why not, doing, not it. doing it. That's why he's not doing it. So if you were to try it, right, I would definitely try to, to do something like that where the surface you know is already pretty slick. Um, and then working your way from being comfortable doing that to then um, on the clay, on a clay court, because um, it's easier on the body, and then you can transition that into a harder surface. So. All right, so socks on a wooden floor, socks on some marble would even be better. Um, that'll, be even, that'll be fun, actually. You got some marble at your house? Let's go. Anyways, no. all right, be careful doing the slide. We ain't responsible for you. We just showing you how, all right? I want to thank my man, Coach Chris, for teaching you how to slide today. Where can we find you, Coach Chris? You can find me, CV Chen Tennis, um, and I'll post other content there too as well. All right, guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put 
R-Spin on your tennis.